What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. For today's video, we're going to be checking out the Transformers Studio Series, Bumblebee Movie, Voyager Class, Shockwave. And um, what's a massive upgrade literally compared to the core class. This character has now finally been released in the scale which we really should have seen from the start. And much like some of those past Cybertronian characters, is a near bang on representation to how he very briefly appeared in the Bumblebee film. So as we check out the design, the details are just crazy. I think this has to be one of the best sculpted Decepticons that we've so far seen from this Bumblebee movie subline. Check out the head sculpt complete with light piping. The chest unit has some internal details which are looking sick. And he's also packing a fair amount of battle damage. I mean, check it out. Scattered all the way throughout the robot design. This guy really is the perfect translation from G1 into live action. And if the Decepticons are to return in the next live action movie, then this is exactly how I would love Shockwave to look. Now, one of my favourite details would have to be the tiny Autobot insignia engraved into the forearm. Now this is accurate to the CG design, I believe is an animation error. Both Shockwave and Soundwave were reskinned from the Optimus Prime model, so maybe this is a carryover from that, but Either way, super sick to see it on a studio series. And as we check him out here from the back, because Shockwave unfortunately never transformed on screen, it has once again allowed the design team to truly focus on this form. So he has an incredibly clean back profile. There really is next to no kibble. And there's even a detailed spinal column, which is looking so wicked. Now, as we check him out from the front again, I'm sure you guys may have noticed that he is packing a pair of humanoid hands. Now, in the movie, only one side ever has this hand. So sure the only logical way to display him would be pack in his iconic G1 arm cannon, which is massive. So nicely detailed and painted. It's also blast effect compatible, so if you happen to have any purple ones laying around, then he is going to look sick commanding the Seekers into battle. And to pair with it, also included is this really detailed rubberized hose, which looks wicked, especially for being a super flexible piece. And the integration is pretty cool too. So on the inside of the arm cannon is this tiny little tab which is going to slide into this slot. Now due to its size it's pretty much going to encase the entire humanoid hand so you really won't see it at all which I thought was pretty sweet. So that will click into place then we'll spin around here to the back and he is packing a symmetrical design. So for whatever reason if you wanted the arm cannon on the opposite side then that is absolutely a look that you can have. Although you are going to want to take this rubberized hose and just port it here into the back. Back, and that is a sick looking cannon. I mean, it's a great size, very accurate to how it appeared in the movie. And the rubberized hose doesn't restrict articulation at all. So you can most definitely recreate the pose that we see in the film where he is commanding the Seekers, destroy the launch pads, let none escape. Now, as we check out Shockwave's posability, unfortunately, it's nowhere near as impressive as how this guy looks. So, up first, the head is on a very basic swivel. It will look left, it will look right. He's also packing some light piping, although it's pretty much useless. You can't barely get any light shining through that, which is a bit of a shame. The shoulders can rotate all the way around with no problem. They'll then kick out to the side, but he is lacking a bicep joint, which sucks, especially as the core class figure included that. And at this point, it is a basic point of articulation for any transforming transformer so that really is a real shame and in some ways it seems at one point they had intended it to move because the shoulder pads are clearly a separate piece but then at the very last minute they've added this kind of catch over the top to stop them from hinging upwards so maybe they thought it would mess with the transformation I really have no idea but instead what we're left with is a forearm swivel which is useless I mean this is basically a glorified wrist joint so sadly no outwards range here at all the elbow will be to 90 the wrist can move but then what is the point of this moving if the forearm can swivel the waist can rotate all the way around with no problems at all the hips will kick forwards to that far they'll then kick back to that far and out all the way which is pretty dynamic but check this out much like the forearms the thighs are also packing double joints which are useless so one here at the top which is fine but then a second one just above the knee and there really is no need for this they easily could have saved this joint for maybe an actual bicep swivel so that's really strange the knees can bend to 90 and to be fair they do reveal some pretty decent details and then finally the ankles in addition to rocking forwards and backwards can tilt side to side slightly but again are super limited so posability wise is definitely this guy's downfall but to be fair let's put him through the pose test to see what he is truly capable of
Now, taking a look at a few comparisons, on the left-hand side we have the very first time Shockwave showed up in live action. This is the Studio Series Leader Class Dark of the Moon version. Here we have the 2013 Transformers Prime Beast Hunter Shockwave. They've definitely pulled out all the stops in making him one of the biggest Bumblebee movie figures to date. And that can be seen even clearer once we whack out the Siege War for Cybertron Leader Shockwave. And then to fire through a few quick fire comparisons, on the left hand side we have the Bumblebee movie Optimus Prime. The Buzzworthy Rise of the Beasts Optimus Prime. Transformers Bumblebee movie Soundwave. Here we have the Bumblebee movie concept series Megatron. This is a leader class. This is a Voyager class. It's honestly kind of crazy that they are pretty much eye to eye with each other. Here he is compared to what used to be one of the largest Voyagers, that being the Cybertronian Starscream. For some deluxes, we have Ironhide and RC. Brawn and Cybertronian B127. And then finally, here we have the one that started it all, the OG Core Class Shockwave. Now this was a pretty banging release, especially for the size and the price point, but clearly the new Voyager is now vastly superior. But with that being said, the Core Class is still pretty good. I do find myself preferring the darker shade of purple. I think the thighs are a lot thicker to better match what we saw from the movie. Uh, not to mention he's also packing the bicep rotation, whereas that unfortunately is absent on this much larger release. Now, as we check out Shockwave's transformation, if I had to summarize it in a few words, basically imagine the core class upscaled with a few extra steps sprinkled in, really just to clean that tank mode up. It's honestly super straightforward. So up first, take a hold of the shoulder, hinge this out to the side, grab a hold of the hand, pull this panel down, use the ball joints to take the hands and fold these here inside, and then basically just collapse that panel in until it does snap there into place. Do the same here for this side, so kick out to the side, take the hand, bring it down, fold the hand backwards using the wrist joint, snap this panel here into place. Then what you'll do is spin around here to the back and on the underside of the bicep is this massive slot that should perfectly line up with that tab. So bring the shoulders back slightly, snap that there into place. Then we're going to use that pointless bicep joint, rotate this here around and on the underside, much like the core release, is a tiny little slot which is going to peg into that tab. So snap that there into place and do the exact same here for this side. So bring the shoulder back, snap that in there, rotate this forearm around, clip that into place, then we'll come down here to the legs, you'll want to take a hold of the tread, pull this here out and then rotate this here around and snap it into place. That will then allow for enough clearance for us to take a hold of the foot, slide this backwards, snap that in there, then we'll spin around here to this side, so again take a hold of that tread, pull this here forwards, spin this around, snap that into place, take the foot, slide this here upwards and in terms of the thighs these transform pretty much exactly the same as the core class so hinge these here out to the side and then right in the middle of the thigh is a pin joint you're going to want to break this so it hinges down do the same here for this side so hinge this outwards snap this joint here in the middle so at the moment the legs should be looking like this then we're going to take a hold of the chest piece Pull this here forwards at the top, just like that, and then take a hold of the base and extend this here forwards like this. Then we're going to bring this here down. Once you reach this point, you're then going to take this middle piece and begin hinging this inside until it's roughly in this position. Then what you'll do is perfectly line the waist up, bring this entire section here down, and as you guys can see, there is a tab here and a tab here that should slide into these two tiny little slots. So line those up as best you can until they're snapped into place. Then we can flip Shockwave here to the underside, take this panel and kind of slide it into that groove. So snap that in there. And then these two tiny circular pegs are gonna slide into these ports. So snap that one in and do the exact same here for this side. Then we'll flip him up to the top, take a hold of the entire upper chest, bring this here forwards until it does click into place. Then we'll take Shockwave's head, slide this in, Whack out the arm cannon as surprisingly this transforms. You'll want to take a hold of the barrel, extend this here forwards on the double hinge joint, flip here to the underside, take this massive post and click it forwards. Bring both Shockwave and the arm cannon in. There is a massive port here at the top that this post is going to slide into. So peg that in. We can then spin around here to the back and make use out of any of these little circular ports. So honestly, I like to use this one. So slide that section in there until it clips into place. 
And bang! Here we have Shockwave fully transformed into his Cybertronian tank mode. And it's not bad, you know, Shockwave never actually transformed in the movie, so Hasbro have kind of directly based this on, I believe, concept art, and have definitely taken some inspiration from the previous Shockwave tanks, because this is near enough a one-to-one -one match to how he appeared in the old Transformers Prime TV show, and it's actually pretty decent. I mean, the details are pretty much everything that we saw in the robot mode. It does just end up in a slightly different place place but as we flip him here to the underside he is surprisingly packing four wheels which have no problems in rolling out into the battlefield so that in itself is a huge improvement when compared to the concept art Megatron check out some of the new details that we this time round have for the blaster which is fully articulated so you can take the turret you can move it here left to right and even hinge it up and down to an extent so that's pretty sweet my only real issue would be the front in some ways I wish maybe they had added an additional panel to kind of cover up those ugly ankle hinge joints because those looking at you from the front really don't look the best but with the exception of those it's not a bad conceptualized tank mode to accompany a pretty banging looking robot mode and checking out some comparisons, on the right hand side we have the Studio Series Dark of the Moon Shockwave. Now neither of these tanks ever appeared in the movie, although with that being said, I definitely find myself preferring the Bumblebee movie design. Here is how he sizes up against the Transformers Prime Beast Hunters Shockwave, and this is clearly where the inspiration originally came for this Cybertronian tank mode. If Hasbro ever kind of bring the Transformers Prime Predacon Rising movie to the Studio Series, then I can definitely see them taking this Bumblebee movie mold and turning it into a Transformers Prime Shockwave because at the moment it really does seem to be the perfect mold base for this design. Here is how he stacks up against the Transformers War for Cybertron Siege Leader Class Shockwave and it would be kind of interesting if Shockwave does make an appearance in the next live action movie to see him maybe scan into an actual Earth based form because for the last couple of years he's been these weird alien kind of Cybertronian modes which let's all face it have definitely been the weaker out of his two mode so it would be interesting to see him transform into something proper Speaking of, here we have the Bumblebee movie Earth Mode Optimus Prime. So, again, a really decent size for a Voyager. He pretty much demolishes the B-movie Prime in terms of size. Here is how he stacks up against the concept series Megatron. Now, despite Megatron being a leader class, again, I think Shockwave looks a lot better in tank mode. And as I mentioned, this figure features proper rolling wheels, whereas those were absent on this leader class. So, yeah, there definitely was some cost cutting going on when it came to that Megatron unfortunately as I mentioned in my review they really should have scrapped the jet mode and solely focused all their efforts in the tank mode Here's the Bumblebee movie, Cybertronian Soundwave, which has a great robot mode, but a crap looking jet mode. I mean, this thing really is awful in comparison to Shockwave. So at the moment, it's only logical to say that Shockwave is looking to have one of the strongest Cybertronian alt modes. But that title is very quickly retired for Shockwave as we whack out the Bumblebee movie Cybertronian Starscream, who I still think remains as looking the best in his alt form. This Cybertronian Tetrajet was surprisingly pretty bang on to how it briefly appeared in the movie, but considering Shockwave's design is for the most part conceptualized, do you know what? It isn't a bad runner up for now. And finally, here we have the Core Class Shockwave. So these were definitely based on the same concept. In terms of tank mode, despite there being a huge difference in the size and the price point, they are very similar. The only real differences are that the Voyager version cleans up the hands in the back. Should have they gone for a slightly different alt form considering this is a Voyager? You know, it retails for a lot more than a core class. Honestly, I'm not too sure because if something's not broken, why fix it? But the engineering definitely is very simplified for a Voyager class, which is maybe why he is so big for a modern day release. And so, wrapping up on this review for the Transformers Studio Series Bumblebee movie, Shockwave. Overall, it's a pretty decent figure. Robot mode wise, he looks incredible. The details are definitely among some of the best that we've so far seen, especially for the Decepticons, but the articulation ultimately is this guy's biggest downfall. The lack of a bicep joint on a modern Voyager release I think straight up sucks. Transformation, super straightforward, and the tank mode is pretty much a carbon copy of the core class just upscaled, which looks decent. I mean, as I mentioned, with the exception of the Cybertronian Tetrajet, is probably one of 
the best looking Decepticon alt modes that we've so far seen for this line, I would definitely recommend this guy. I mean, Shockwave is one of the core four. So the lack of a bicep joint whilst is not great, I really don't think should be enough to defer you from this guy overall because it is definitely a pretty banging looking Shockwave. I would love to get your thoughts on this release down in the comment section below. What do you guys think? I want to thank you all so much for watching and until my next review, transform and roll out.